problems. But um, thank you for joining us this morning to the special meeting of the Longmont Housing Authority on Tuesday, September 8th. Uh, Olivia, do you mind doing a roll call for us? Sure thing. I am seeing Chairman Cameron Grant, Vice Chairman Tim Waters, Board Members Harold Dominguez, Jean Christopher, Tom DeBee, Lauren Kelly, Arlene Zortman. We also have Kathy Fedler, Karen Roney, and Polly Christensen. Thank you very much. Um, I am frantically trying to find my agenda. So Olivia, if you'll remind me what the first item on the agenda is, we'll dive into that. Well, first yeah. things first, public invited to be heard, but we, oh, there we go. have anyone down here, so we're good to go on that. Thank you um, for keeping me straight. <laughs> After that, if we want to do Arlene's oath of office. Yes. Yeah, so Arlene joined us several meetings ago now, thanks to our uh, frequent special meetings. Um, but we need to start out with uh, the oath of office. And I am, my computer's still giving me fits, so I apologize. Um, Councilman Waters, would you, if you have that oath available on your agenda, would you be willing to step in and administer that to Arlene while my computer wakes up? Hang on, let me see if I can, I'll get back to my agenda. Wait, I, I've got it, I've got it. I can do it if you'd like. Uh, so Arlene, in your packet, there's the oath of office. It's the second second page of the packet. Um, what we need you to do is uh, virtually raise your right hand and um, read the oath of office. It begins, I, Arlene Zortman. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, Arlene Zortman, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the state of Colorado, and I will faithfully perform the duties of the Office of Commissioner and will adhere to the governing policies for the Housing Authority of the City of Longmont, Colorado, which I am about to enter. And I, Cameron Grant, Chairman of the Housing Authority for the City of Longmont, Colorado, hereby certify that Arlene Zortman shall be one of seven commissioners of the Housing Authority for the City of Longmont, Colorado, and appeared before me on the 8th day of September 2020 and recited this oath of office for commissioner. And then Arlene, Olivia will circulate this for signature and then we will uh, keep this with LHA records. Okay. Excellent. Uh, second item on the agenda, which I think is the only remaining item is our communication to the city council. And as you will recall, when we spoke at our last meeting, um, the mayor has sent a communication to me uh, asking that the housing authority speak to council at their September 15th meeting, um, specifically on the point of what value city staff members are bringing to the LHA you know, during our IGA process. Um, and I had hoped to get a, a letter out earlier so you could all have more time to digest this, but I did finally put something together over the weekend that Olivia circulated. And then I'm not sure if the second round went out, but Jean had some comments. Yeah, I see that that did. Jean had some, some comments as well. So that is now in front of you. So this is my attempt to address the mayor's question, um, but it is nothing but an attempt. And as I mentioned last time, my hope is that this is a communication from the authority, not from from the chair or from any individual. So uh, would love to get your take on kind of the concept of the letter, what we should put in it, and then we can specifically try to finalize this thing. And my, since I'm working off my iPhone, I might be a little slow when you raise your hand. So, so uh, if I don't call on you, just you know, go ahead and start talking because um, I can only see four on the screen at a time. Why don't I start with Jean, since you had some comments, Jean. Okay. Um, Cameron, you there? Yes. Okay. Um, let me pull up. Um, 
I just had comments about the flow of the letter. Um, you want me to go through all the ones I sent to you? Well, I think we, we could probably um, just incorporate those unless there are any kind of key points you want to want to raise. But you, you, you've got the floor, so whatever you think is the most effective. Okay. Um, in the first sentence, I kind of wanted to stress um, uh, what we're saying, so I reworded it. Thank you for the opportunity to communicate this important information. Uh, and then I uh, decided recently Mayor Bagley asked that the LHA make a presentation to the city regarding the value that the city staff currently provides to our organization. While difficult to fully quantify, this letter identifies three areas in which the city staff supports LHA operations as well as our attempt to place value on each. Uh, the next change I recommended was in the first sentence and the next paragraph, um, it should be ITS, no apostrophe. Uh, and then um, in the last sentence, instead of these, I crossed that out and I said, we realized this structure would require significant changes if the LHA was to avoid unpalpable, uh, unpalatable rent increases for our residents. Um, the next change I made was the next paragraph. Instead let's, of, let's pause right there and see if okay. does anyone else have any general comments or comments about the, the first couple of paragraphs of this letter. I think maybe we break this down into to pieces. Are we setting the scene? properly in outlining the, the, the right issues? Councilman Waters. Um, uh, first of all, I've learned that to listen to Jean, if, I mean, she catches things and has a, a gift for this um, that I've learned to respect and appreciate. So um, whatever Jean is suggesting, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty certain I'm gonna think is a good idea. Uh, however, here's what, I'd rather not get into try to wordsmithing this um, I think it'll take us the rest of the day if we're going to, you know, try to wordsmith. And I think that's probably what Gene was wondering about in terms of how yeah. to handle this. Exactly. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so I think I think what we ought to get clear on the big ideas, and if there are general guidance, I I have some thoughts about the, the next to the last paragraph, and, and I've got language, but I but the idea for me is more important than my words. Is that there are some ideas that I think one additional idea we ought to include in that next to the last paragraph. So whatever's gonna be most helpful for you, Cameron, and for us to communicate uh, to the council just um, how much we appreciate what the city's done, the stakes if they hadn't, and, um, and the message that how we have valued, and you've done a great job of that, um, both in terms of dollars and cents and intangibles, <laughs> but it's the intangibles that I wanna to speak to after Jane's finished. Okay. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. Cameron? I don't see any other hands raised, so why don't we just, let's, let's plow on for the next okay. couple. And I, and I tend to agree with Tim that, you know, yes. Gene, the yes. changes you caught are excellent. I, I agree too, because um, I think you made the valuable point um, that we value what the city has contributed. And I, um, and, and like I said, what, I, what I've done is simply uh, wordsmith uh, just for the flow. So what, so why don't we, Tim, hear your points, and then what I do want to go back and uh, and hear from um, Kathy, Karen, and Harold about how they think we ought to fill in some of the blanks yes. with actual numbers, because I, I suspect that what the city's really looking for is dollars and cents, but um, but we need some of this other uh, supporting background. So, so Tim, do you want to fill us in on your thoughts? Well, I, it, when, it, it's really when, it, when you refer to intangibles, and I, there's a sentence that says, we are also, um, there is also an intangible I would like to make that a plural. There are also intangibles uh, that the city okay. brings. And then, and then in the next to the last paragraph, um, you, spe you address specifically um, the intangible, uh, uh, some of the intangibles on the, on the positive side that the city's brought. And I won't, my words, I, I'm happy, Cameron, to send back to you. I, I was gone until late yesterday 
so I didn't have a chance to do any editing on this this morning. I'm happy to add my edits and send it back to you. But the idea, that the additional intangibles, I think we ought to include in this, um, are the, the personal impact that, 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 that if the city had turned away from LHA, letting LHA fail, the personal consequences for our residents and the economic or financial consequences for the city are incalculable. And you've done a nice job on the, on the plus side. I just think we ought to make it clear to, this, to the whoever's going to listen to this that had the city res not responded the way they did, there were real costs to people yeah. and, to the, <clears throat> and to the city. Uh, not just the city of, not just the city's, a bit of the government, you know, a broader impact on our, on our population. So those are the, that's the, that's kind of the dark side of not responding because you've right. had the upside of having responded. I just think we ought to acknowledge what was at risk if the city had not stepped in. That's good. If you, if you want to, I think that's excellent. Um, yes. If you don't mind sending in over some ideas, we can incorporate that. Anyone else have some comments? Okay. Come on, Cameron, wake up. Arlene, go ahead. I'm, I'm awake. I'm just, I'm, I'm scanning back and forth on my phone to, to see who's waving. So Arlene, please go ahead. Well, I guess I kind of go along with what Tim was saying a little bit. I, I realize this is going to the mayor and the council and they probably know everything and actually more than I do. But if this were to go to the paper for some reason, I'm wondering if we need to actually put in numbers um, kind of along Tim's thinking of how many people would actually be affected. Cause I think at some point I read that there was like more than a thousand people that are being served now. And I think that's kind of important for people out in the public to know that, you know, we're doing a good job here and this is how many people would be affected if we didn't have this going on. That's just a thought. I think that's good. Uh, I, I don't have, know. I have that same point too, uh, Arlene. I, that, was, that was my note is just how, how many total people would be affected if, if we were say to go under how many, how many in the city were helping. That'd be good to have that number, that that thousand-ish number. Um, that probably started with me talking with uh, uh, the one of the reporters for uh, Longmont Leader, I believe. When and I, I I just took a shot in the dark and figured if we've got four hundred and fifty or four hundred sixty-two units, many of those units have more than one person in them, and we have vouchers in the four hundred to four hundred and fifty range. We must be over a thousand people, but I, but I don't have an actual number. So I kind of just guessed at it because I thought it might sound powerful, but it'd be nice to have a, a more precise number if we can get that. Um, Cameron, uh, this is Polly. Um, yep. Yeah, I believe that that's where that came from because I mentioned that when we were talking about it, I said there were over 400 people and I got that as, as you said from what you said to John Fryer. So if what you said to John Fryer was kind of a ballpark, then maybe we should tighten that up. But yes, you said that we had over a thousand vouchers. And I think right. that's, I agree with everybody that it, it's really important for people to understand how many people are, are at risk, we're at risk of not having a home. And it's winter coming on at, um, so yeah, if if you have an actual number, that would be great. But certainly, um, over four hundred people is uh, over four hundred units is not a small number. I think you are yeah, right. And, yeah. yeah, and to clarify, it's two different uh, components. One are the four hundred and sixty-two actual apartment units that we have that are filled with people, uh, and then separate from that are the vouchers, which uh, house people outside of our units. Um, so when, I, when you put those together, we've got a pretty significant number. Cameron, off the top of your head, or maybe Harold or one of the other staff members have the actual number of vouchers, because we've discovered more. I think we had 415 or 450 vouchers. That number's come down as costs have gone up, but it would be good to have 
a, a better number on the actual number of vouchers in addition to the residents. And I would add one more thought. It's one thing for this effect to affect that thousand-ish people. It affects all the family members of okay. those thousand-ish people who are going to have to figure out what to do with their moms, dads, aunts, uncles, whoever, brothers and sisters, you know, who are now in secure housing who wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. So we, um, Kathy may be able to help. I know that we added, in a conversation with HUD, we found 40 additional vouchers. I just don't know what the starting point was. Kathy, do you know the answer to that? Um, it, it varies. <clears throat> so I will get a, a more definitive figure. I'm taking notes here. Again, I'm kind of going, oh, again, I'm kind of going back to talking about how many people would actually be affected. And I guess I'm more concerned about whether it goes to the newspaper. Mm -hmm. And if it does, is do we want to split it down into these people are actually housed in units that we have, like Fall River and Spring uh, Creek. Um, but these people, and you, you did talk about this, the vouchers, are actually have found housing on their own and are getting help. I would like to see it kind of maybe possibly how many children are included in this because I think that's kind of important that they don't, that they know it's not just all adults. Just a thought. By the way, Jean's twice wondered, Arlene's, Arlene has wondered twice if this is going to go to the newspaper. Personally, I hope it goes to the newspaper. I, I mean, this is, this is part of the story that I hope the, our local media can help tell to the general public. And the Times Call and the Longmont Leader are, you know, the two news sources. That's why there was a kind of a deep background discussion with them, so they'd understand the context within which this statement's going to be made. So I hope they pick it up and report it word for word myself. Jean? Yeah, <clears throat> I want to um, support what Arlene said about children because uh, Aspenetto's neighborhood at one time with only 28 units had 99 residents. So there are a lot of children that are affected mm -hmm. by this. There's another aspect that's been, that I've been thinking about, even though it isn't current today, um, LHA is in line to take over management of Christman in a couple of years. And I'm not sure how many units are involved in that too, but we have a link to even more than the thousand that we're talking about. Well, we'll collect those numbers and, and uh, I'll put together another version that tries to tell that story. Um, and then Tim's gonna get some so more language on that intangible piece as well. So we'll, we'll, we'll wordsmith that offline and then circulate that uh, through Olivia. Um, so we do that properly. Uh, and then I just, let me ask this question of Harold, Kathy, Karen, um, and Olivia, the, the section that's on, that references specific numbers of employees and dollar amounts. So I guess the first question would be, is that information that's, relatively available and then the second broader question would be um, any any issues or concerns with presenting that information I mean, I think it's what they asked for but um, and once once you start getting into dollars it you know people latch on to that so this is Kathy um, there are seven positions that are vacant under the current organizational chart not including what hybrid models or, you know, what we end up mm -hmm. moving to. Um, and the total savings after we take out um, temporary folks uh, that we have spent and that kind of thing is, is just under 200,000, it's 196,000. And so we do have that information. Um, it's just, you know, you tell me what you want to put in there, but I can, I can fill in a lot of that information okay. and put some parameters around it. And then you all can decide what you want to include or not include or how you want to say it. Yeah, I can work with Go ahead. I, I can work with Kathy on the, on the, the technical side of this and you know, I'm going to see it as, you know, has 
vacant position has the following vacant positions colon listing those out with their salaries and then saying the last sentence this is how much we have available in this budget year uh, from salary savings just to get a mm -hmm. sense of it um, because as we're prepping the budget now for you all um, it's also good for you because um, we're going to have to do some budget restructuring in order to accomplish what we need to operationally. That would be helpful. And then in that, in that paragraph, I, I just pulled out May through December. I wasn't sure what the right timing was. Um, so think about that when you uh, fill out the parameters. Yeah, I would say this budget year because it's all over the place. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts on what should or shouldn't go in this letter um, and how we ought to present it? Uh, Polly. Uh, just one point of information. Uh, please keep in mind that this did not come from council. This came solely from the mayor acting on his own. So, so would it be better? So, it's uh, it's addressed right now to the mayor and city council. Is that appropriate, or should it? Should I just? You know, I have to, Polly. We sat together in an executive session to talk about this, and this is exactly what we talked about doing. So, to lay this off on the mayor this way in a public meeting, I can't sit here and be quiet. That's not accurate. Well, that's a matter for council to wrestle with. We are going to address this to the mayor and the council because that's where we've been asked to provide the information. Um, I'm just so telling we, you where it came from originally. Yep. I'm not trying to make okay. some other statement. Thank you. I'm, I'm slowly browsing to see if I see, oh, there's a hand, Karen. Uh, thank you, Cameron. And I realize I, I am not a member of the board. Got that. So, um, so I am just mindful in, in the letter that we're talking about the value of city staff. And I, I just would like to throw out there um, an opportunity to recognize the LHA staff members who are, um, you know, hanging in there and who've been um, doing incredible work alongside with city staff. I, I just. So I just wanted to not let that go unsaid that, um, that if there is an opportunity to insert um, a recognition for the, the staff who have remained with us and are doing um, incredible work, I, I think that would be important to, to include. I think that's very important. I, and I do want to kind of commend um, Harold and Karen and Kathy who in their comments to council, at least the past couple of times I've watched and listened to LHA related discussions, that point has always been emphasized. Um, and for Olivia and anyone else who, who listens to this, you know, that certainly does not go unnoticed. And I don't think we'd be where we are without those dedicated staff people. So we'll put that in the letter. So I don't want to rush this because sometimes really good things like that come out. Um, so we, we can always, this, this isn't being presented to the city until the 15th. We do have a, a regular board meeting that morning, I believe. Um, so what we can do is bring a, what we think is a final draft of this back and review it as part of a regular agenda. Uh, and get this to the city you know, that morning. It'll be a little late getting into their packet, um, but it'll be in their packet. Uh, in, you know, in terms of the, the press, because it'll be in the packet, it'll be public. So I'm presuming that, that things we say in here will find their way into print. Um, you know, so think about that as we're polishing this off. Jean? Um, I'm wondering if um, we could put a little more about the future of working with the city and uh, the, the benefits that we expect to accrue from that. I know we've talked about if we didn't have the city, this, 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 and what happened. But 
I'm wondering if we can kind of flesh out how this specifically the city is um, a little more specifically how the city has really uh, is, is going to continue to help. Do you get my drift? Yeah, absolutely. I like the idea. Um, maybe others on the call can throw out some thoughts on that. Cameron, I'm happy to try to add some of that to, to the last okay. part of this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide some editorial input. You decide what you want to do with it to the end of the letter, and I'll, I'll add something if that's helpful. And then, you know, you can send it out for another round of review. Sounds good. <laughs> Any other discussion today on this item? Yeah. Lauren. <clears throat> Hi, and I'm sorry I wasn't available for the September 1st meeting. Um, so I've, I've kind of just been sitting back listening um, since I wasn't really involved in how this all got started. But, um, you know, hearing some of the concerns about like the newspaper picking this up and how much information should we put in. Um, my thought was just knowing what has gone on with the LHA and, and the press in the past. I think this is a great opportunity like others have said, to, to really bring out all of this information, be really open and transparent about what we were facing, what we hope for, and what our main goal yeah. is, and trying to do the right thing for our residents yeah. and for the, city, for the city population as a whole. Um, I, I do think it would be great to put in as much detail and information to be as transparent as humanly possible about this so that people don't think that we're hiding anything. Um, I working for the county for eight years, I know that as soon as you start being vague about things, that's when the core requests start rolling in because people think you're hiding stuff. So I think this is a great opportunity for us to really put it all out there and say, this is a new board. We have new members, new leadership, new, um, new mission, new partnership with the city of Longmont, new visions, new goals. And we're really holding ourselves up to a much higher standard than in the past. And I think that will help give the residents that we serve and then the larger population of the city of Longmont um, more faith in what we're doing. Um, just because knowing what has happened in the past to now, I think we're in such a good direction. And I think the leadership that we have and the leadership coming from city of Longmont, this it's so important and I think that that just needs to be communicated and I'm fully on board with, with everything with, yes, I absolutely agree that the city employees should be compensated for the amazing and tireless work that they are doing because there's, I mean, they're doing like three full-time jobs now. So just wanted to put that out there since I wasn't here last week. Um, and I don't know if I, if we're voting on anything, if I need to abstain since I wasn't part of the conversation, but let me know. Um, but yeah, I fully support where we're headed. And I, I think with the additions that we've discussed this morning, I think it'll be a great, a great presentation for the, the mayor and the council and to the greater population. Thank you. That's, that is a good, uh, good reminder about kind of the importance of transparency and detail because it's going to be picked up. So I, I, I appreciate that. Um, in terms of voting or not voting, my, my thought, unless someone has a different opinion, is that this is more of a um, kind of study session level uh, meeting today where we're trying to craft this into a, a form that we could vote on okay. uh, and then and hopefully have it in final form at our next meeting uh, to, to polish off and get it off to the city. Okay, thank you. All right, so I will, I'll keep talking while I'm scanning for hands, but my thought is that the next step is for um, several of us to put some additional comments in here. To, uh, Dr. Waters is gonna send some, some language. Um, uh, Kathy has some, some input on specific figures. Uh, you can send those to me if you'd like, and I'll craft another version and get it back to Olivia for circulation hopefully earlier than the night before our next gathering. Um, and then we can uh, uh, review this as part of our next agenda. That sound like a good plan? 
All right. It looks like it's the plan. Is there any other business that anyone would like to, uh, to discuss since we are all together? Harold. Yeah, uh, board members, I just wanted to uh, update you on something that happened Friday. I did call Cameron Friday evening to leave a quick message. We had a, uh, just in case you all hear it, uh, we had a small fire at the lodge um, and uh, wanted to, to let you know what happened. So uh, without getting into specifics of how, it looks like a box got caught, was set on a stove that was with a burner. Um, and then the box was moved into different as different areas of the unit. Um, the sprinkler system did work. Um, so there was a fair amount of smoke damage from in, in the unit itself and potentially in the hallway. Uh, but when the sprinkler went off, it, it managed to flood um, the second floor on the left side as you're walking in. And then it went down into the first floor. So during that event, we actually um, called 24-7, who's the restoration company that we work with. Uh, we needed to relocate approximately, um, I believe it was nine individuals. Um, we worked to, to get them um, into the Candlewood Suites because they have small kitchenettes in there and they could move their food and actually cook there like they would in their, in their unit um, so that we could get the drying um, occurring in the wall. Uh, last night um, or yesterday afternoon, I was informed that the drying's going well, so we will know hopefully in a couple of hours um, based on who can move back in. Uh, we do have two units in particular that will probably be um, out of um, where they won't be able to go back in right away. The one where it occurred based on the water damage and the smoke damage, and then the one below it where there was a, a significant amount of water damage but we'll know that today. Um, we were able to move through it. Um, we were moving pretty quickly Friday. I wanna thank uh, Dennis and his maintenance staff and Michelle Waite and her senior service staff um, and uh, Tracy and Karen and Kathy as everyone was making calls trying to get people relocated. We actually did that. Um, I think we had everyone um, move to the um, hotel trying to remember what time I left, around six o'clock. At that point, everyone was already at the hotel. Um, I know they've been working with them, but I just wanted you all to be aware of it. Um, things seem to, to move quickly and as, as well as could be expected. And hopefully today we will get people move back into their units, obviously with the weather. Some may not want to drive, so I'm going to be working with them to get transportation back and then see how we can get their cars moved back to the facility. So as if you didn't have enough to do already, we had a pre-weekend fire drill, literally. No, it was, it was actually for me, it was, um, it was really good for me to get to work with um, Elliot and Olivia. I mean, Olivia was on the phone with me making hotel reservations and doing all of that. And it was a great opportunity for me uh, to work with them at, the, at this level um, and be at the facility and see how they respond. And, um, Everyone did a phenomenal job moving pretty quickly. Um, and it was just, it was a good, it was a good opportunity Friday for all, for all of us to work with each other in a stressful situation where you have to move fast. That's the, the beginnings of how you build a team um, and how we integrate with each other. And um, they did a great job. I didn't call you all because we had it handled. We had it handled. Um, um, so, so. And, and we were moving pretty quick. But um, had it have been worse, you may have gotten a phone call from me if it would have been a more significant event. But we, you know, by Friday afternoon, it was really water damage that we were dealing with um, at the end of the day. Kathy, Karen, do you need to add anything to that? I, I would just add, um, mention for Brittany. Oh, Brittany, yeah. Manager. Yeah, Brittany did a great job in this. And, and again, a good learning mo moment for her. Um, obviously can't remember everyone that was there. It was moving so fast, but everyone that was involved did a great job. Um, and and this, these are those foundational moments in building a team that bring you together and make you stronger. So um, great job, move quickly. And uh, at the end of the day, what was the, the, most, uh, the biggest piece for me, everyone's focus was on the residents um, and how do we make the transition easier for the residents and how do we ensure that they're safe throughout all of this? Um, this is my first 
uh, run at one of one of these types of situations with the housing authority staff and with as we work together. But it it, it went um, in the chaos of these events. It went as well as I could have hoped for and expected, and everyone did a phenomenal job. Well, good. Well, thank you for taking care of things so effectively. Any other final comments before we wrap? All right, seeing none, I will uh, thank you all for this semi-impromptu semi gathering and call this meeting closed. We'll talk to you all next week.